Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, live from Calipatria State Prison inside of the state of California. I must ask, sir, what did they call you? Uh, they call me Peachy. What are you incarcerated for, sir, and how long is your sentence? Uh, I'm incarcerated for shooting a, a police officer, and uh, I had a juvenile sentence, but I picked up more time in here. I was already done with uh, my sentence. Where are you from out here on the streets? Uh, from Orange County. And do you or did you at any time point in your life belong to any type do of gangs, or groups, organizations, sir? Street and prison. May I ask, uh, what were you associated with, sir? Uh, in here, with uh, I'm a validated uh, associate of the, of the Mexican Mafia, and then out there I'm from La Habra Monos. You know, first and foremost, before anything, Josue, I'd like to go ahead and extend my gratitude towards you. And I want to go ahead and say thank you, sir, for allowing me to be able to dive inside your mind and, and ask you these questions, man. This is an open platform. However, this is your space. This is your video. So please feel free to be talk about okay. whatever you want, sir. All right. Well, just whatever uh, you have uh, questions about, I would answer. You know, I would hate to see people end up in the predicament I'm in, you know. Most definitely, most definitely, sir. So go ahead and uh, take us back, man, from the very beginning and let us know what it was like growing up in Orange County, man. And uh, ultimately, what led you down this path? Who planted this seed in your head of of gangbanging, man? Uh, well, it, I didn't, it didn't all start out like that for me. When I grew up, uh, I grew up with a good family. Uh, I had good parents. But uh, one day, uh, I just ended up moving out and moved in with my uncle. My uncles are from, from my hood and my cousins live there. They're all from my gang, everything. So I started hanging out with them. And then one thing led to another. I was a little kid. So, you know, little kids are easily impressed. I was only 12 years old when I started kicking it. And then one day I was coming back from the house and some cop jumped or some guy jumped out of the car, uh, some car bumping loud music. He had a shaved head. He was all banged out. And he gang banged on me and he said the other side so i shot him and little did i know he was a, a gang unit so a couple of months later i got arrested came out the news you know I, I i can't really speak much of how it led me to be in here because i got arrested at, at 12 years old so basically everything i could remember is being in here from doing a hall i went to ya at a young age i, I got placed into ya when i was 14 years old and Everybody was older than me, so I always had to fight everybody because I was the youngest in every group I went to. Since I was convicted of a, a violent crime, they always sent me to the most maximum security uh, facilities everywhere. So everybody was older than me, so I always had to fight. And then uh, it led for me coming to from YA to prison, to shoot terms, got validated. I've uh, been in riots, I've been stabbed, I stabbed people. And just, ongoing cycle of violence and negativity that I would hope, you know, one day ends. Right now there's a lot of, of peace treaties, but still like no, I wouldn't wish I wouldn't wish prison on, on like even the people I hate the most. You know, this is not you gotta see your family grow up through pictures, you, you know, the visits are shorter and whenever you can get them. You know, the system it, it, it has a way of breaking you and, and kind of, uh, turning you into something that you weren't before, you know. I know they say for this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I know they say prison is supposed to rehabilitate you, but it corrupts you more than you were. Like I'm more, I got exposed to more violence than I would have ever thought possible. Like it made me become a violent person myself. And uh, during these last few years, uh, ever since I had my daughter, uh, I've been trying to change. You know, I have been seeking help. Groups, I, I go to school, I do programs, but it's just like, um, I don't know, man. I, I would really, really wish for. You know, I want to go ahead and ask you the first thing that stood out to me was when you said that you moved uh, to your uncle's. Uh, why was that, man? Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't get along with my dad. I caught my dad doing something I would rather not uh, share, you know, but. I ended up being in a fight with him, and I got kicked out. 
And you stay. Basically, I'm going to fight with my dad. Huh? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Like, my parents lived in. A, oh, so my bad. My parents lived in a different in a different city. So, uh, like they raised us like to be different. Like they raised us in like a good area. But uh, when I was like I tell you, when I was 12, I used to play football. I came home one day and I caught my dad uh, being uh, getting physical with my mom. So I ended up uh, tackling him. I ended up being in a fight with him, and then um, and uh, ended up him kicking my ass. When I was able to recover, I got kicked out of the house and I moved in with my uncle. And then that's where everything went downhill for me. How did that affect you? Not like mentally? I wanted to be. Just, uh, well, honestly, everything it affected me more. I think growing up, not not right away, because when I got when I got kicked out, I moved to my uncle's house, and obviously, you know, they they don't care. You know, gang banging starts at a young age. And, I was drinking, I started smoking, I started doing drugs back then, so... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Everything to me was just like a whirlwind, like, everything just happened so fast, you know, it was... Six months went by in the blink of an eye, and next thing you know, I'm in here, and then... I never had really, I never really had time uh, to decompress or compose myself or materialize my, my emotions and my trauma, because... I've always been in, in here and it's always been, you know, fight to survive. So I've never actually had time to sit there and any, analyze uh, like my trauma. But I know, I know I do have trauma. I know that, that a lot of the stuff I've seen in here leads to, to the, the way that I've become and I'm trying to change now and why, why I, I want to, you know, try to encourage our youth to take a different route, you know, gang banging ain't cool. No, I'm still an active gang member in here, and even though this goes against, like, what supposedly I represent or whatever, I, I would never want to see somebody, you know, every time I see someone, like, 18 years old coming into prison, it's hard because it's just a young life thrown away for nothing, you know? You know, you stated that that there was an undercover cop who you know, was presenting himself as, as a gang member. You know, he banged on you, you, you took out your weapon and, and, you, and you shot him. I must ask, man, what drew you to that level? How did you become this, this person that was carrying a pistol and was ready to commit to this uh, crazy acts of violence like nothing, man? How did, you, how did you get this way? Did you yourself experience something? Honestly, I don't even, I, I could not answer you uh, truthfully because I, I really don't know. It's just, it was just a reaction. I was still a little kid, uh, you know, I, I didn't, when you're that age and you're doing drugs already, you don't really grasp the, the severity of what you're doing is what I've learned uh, through these years, you know, like looking back, like my present me would have never done that. But the young me, you know, I had, you know, as soon as I started game being and moved, uh, this is during 05, there was a lot of murders where I was at. And uh, there was a lot of stuff happening. I had already been shot at. I had, you know, I've seen people die already. So to me, it was just like a, a quick reaction. Like I didn't even think about it. I didn't, it didn't click in my mind that, okay, if I pull this trigger, I'm gonna hurt somebody, you know? The cop didn't die, he, he lived, but um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. To be honest with you, I didn't think about what I was doing. I just acted on impulse, which was which has been my problem a lot. Huh? No, no, no. Yeah, especially back in those years, man, two thousand three, two thousand four, two thousand five, two thousand and two. You know that those were those were gang banging years, yeah. man. It's uh, it's mellowed uh, out, man. Fine. It's mellowed out yeah. recently, man. Back back then, it was oh, yeah, crazy. Nah. Yeah. Now with the uh, the uh, uh, cameras, uh, everything, all the social media, you can't do nothing no more without getting caught. Back then, it was different, you know? Back then, there was a lot of people getting away with a lot of stuff. And that that's that's crazy, huh? That's crazy to think of, of all the yeah. people out there in the Los Angeles area, Southern California, Northern California, anywhere, that were murdered, and their killers got oh. away. Their killers got away. A good, a yeah. good portion of them, man. That's that's a that's a crazy sad statistic. 
Yeah, you know, it's the statistic. It's the the statistic of that is, I, I forget the actual numbers, but I know it's like, I think it's like somewhere like seventy percent of actual of all murders don't actually get solved, or the wrong person gets accused of them. All gang related murders, I, I think, or like seventy percent. I don't know if I'm correct, but I know it's really high. The percent of gang related murders never get solved. Which is crazy. Nah, a hundred percent it is, man. That's uh it's it's quite sad, man. It's it's, it's quite sad. Uh, you said you said that yeah. you had seen someone lose their life right before your eyes. You seen someone go? No, oh, I've seen a lot of people die. Honestly, I've seen people die in my hands. I've seen people shot in front of me, even when I started banging. Uh. As far as like details, no, because I think those that I've seen is like, but I, I will like talking. But uh, there was like uh, when I when I first came around, I started kicking it. And I think it was like the third day I started living with my uncle. Uh, we were kicking in his front yard, and the enemies of the other side came through, and they uh, they did a drive by, and the person standing next to me got shot in the face, and he died. And the person behind me got shot in the arm. So I think that like that was like my first first experience with that. Blown off. And, like not even three feet from me. Like it was like like a like a ruler away from me. If they would aimed a little bit more to the to the fight, I would have got shot. And I've seen, you know, like in here. I've been on 180, uh, level 4 180s. I'm still on the level 4 the whole time I've been in prison. I've seen people die over $50. I've seen people die over saying the wrong team or not following orders. Like, this is crazy. $50? Riots were, were, <laughs> and you, you'll die for anything, you motherfucker. For not doing following orders for $50, you know? Just for anything, you die. What happened in that case? Fifty bucks. You mean you don't have to? You don't have to point anybody out. But uh, just what was the situation? Well, I, I'm not necessarily saying it was fifty dollars, but I'm just saying like only somebody fifty. The situation I'm referring to was about like ten years ago, right? I was uh, I was in one of these prisons and uh, uh. And there was a lot of drugs at the time. And you know, drugs, people in here, they got nothing there to do. They get strung out. So some people got strung out and uh, they started messing with the other races because on this side, we're not allowed to mess with like, I'm a Sureño, so we're not allowed to mess with like the blacks, the northerners, the other races, you know. And uh, they were they were the only people willing to sell to the person because he kept getting in debt. And uh, he went and bought from him, and they put him out there. And as soon as they told on him, they told him to stop, and uh, he could find. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Find little pieces of of, of and whatever, and, and that that led to his death. You know? Just he had a habit; he needed help, but. Instead of trying to help them, they just killed them. Yeah, man, it's sad to hear. I, I hate hearing about these stories. How these these uh these men, these uh Hispanic men, go in there, and they're they're easily influenced. The most of them are broken souls. They're broken emotionally and mentally, and the only way they know how to cope is to turn to drugs because that they've always turned to them. They've never had no anyone to run to, so they run to that, and. You know, in prison, they find themselves in debt, and pff, that leads to their death. It's sickening. Yep. Yeah. So the crazy part is, get, I'm, I can't lie, it's getting a little better now. But uh, back then, uh, we weren't allowed, because, like, uh, active, like, the people that are on the GP side, we weren't allowed to go to, like, substance abuse treatment classes. We weren't allowed to seek help. We weren't allowed to like take drugs because we weren't allowed to do a lot of things that would benefit us we are now like we could do certain things now but back then we weren't allowed to do a lot of things that, that could potentially help you out you know but that that too contributed to a lot of things it's just 
crazy. I mean, my first first riot, it was nothing major. It was just like three on three that took into the right. That was just over. It was a uh, over like something little. This was in YA. When I was in YA, it was like uh, three northerners against three southsiders. It just happened just because we crossed paths, you know, and we don't get along. And YA is not like prison. YA is a free for all. Everybody can fight everybody. Uh, my first thought was it was just like the streets, man. Everybody jumps everybody, you know. That was just like gang things. That's that was my first street. The uh, my first major riot was right here where I'm at in Calipatria in 2014. I was here and we had a 500 man riot that kicked off in the Chow Hall, three block, four block, and five block. It was 500 people involved. That one, that one was kind of more scary. I got, I got really hurt in that one. That one, uh, I had just got to this prison. I had came from Pelican Bay and then I got kicked off the shoe and I landed right here. And uh, I was chilling and we walked out to dinner at and we were walking out. It was me and my family, which was messed up because he's an older man. He was like, at the time this happened, I think he was like 47 and he had a, a cane, you know, he was messed up. And we were walking a child and we were in the back. And since we're in orientation, we're in the back with all the black people. So as soon as we walked out, we didn't even make it like 20 feet where we see and we started seeing everybody start fighting along the patio on the yard coming out of the building. And then all the black people were in front of us, they just turned around and they got on us. I ended up getting stabbed. I think I got stabbed seven times that in that riot. And we got jumped. I remember they broke my collarbone. I got shot. And to top it off, not only did, uh, did we get jumped, did I get stabbed, the police shot me because at the end, uh, towards the end of the riot, I ended up getting on top of one of the guy. I ended up overpowering him, the one that was stabbing me, and I ended up taking his weapon, and the cops seen the weapon in my hand, and they shot me instead of shooting him, even though we were the we were the victims in that crime. You know, we were the victims getting jumped. I was still the one that got shot. Really sucked. So, at the time. When it's all going on, you don't really feel it because there's a lot of adrenaline. But when everything starts coming down, I remember I couldn't stop shaking even though I was all hurt and bleeding. Everything hurt. I, I couldn't stop shaking and it was just, it was crazy, man. It's, it's rough. You have 60 seconds remaining. It's rough, but I've been here since I was 12, so I mean, I've adapted to this life already. Which is why I would hate to see someone come in here. I must ask, uh, after these crazy, after these crazy riots, and once they take place, how does that affect you mentally? Like when you when you walk on the yard or when you're released out on your cell block, are you somewhat nervous? Are you tense? Oh, are I, you thinking that this is gonna happen all over again? Oh yes, yeah, you definitely, most definitely. You always walk with the with the pressure of you always walk with the attention, you always walk with animosity, you're always a, a paranoid and you're always on your toes, you know? Which leads to you being stressed out, angry, it leads to a lot of friction, it leads to a lot of problems. So yeah, most definitely. After after everything I've been through, it's hard for me just to walk around. If I see someone get too close to me, I get like edgy. Which is kind of scary because I'm I'm almost going home. Think hopefully I get to go home in August next August, and uh, that's when I, I'm planning to go home. But it, it's kind of like makes me nervous because like, I get really anxious and, and I get really like defensive. Like when someone comes like walks behind me or like someone walks like too close to me or they look at me the wrong way. Like just certain things that have been instilled to me since I've been in here like make me react a certain way and. I'm really trying to get over that and let these things go, but it's easier said than done, to be honest with you. You look at, the, at life differently. You look at everybody as a possible threat, as a possible, uh, like, you know, like an enemy, basically. You know, That's the way I see it. And How do these types of issues get resolved? Uh, well, just basically like that, honestly. <laughs> And it just it came down to whoever got hurt, blood was shed, blood was spilled. That was it. After that, you know, there was tension after that, but everybody was on their toes and, and on their defenses, but everything settled, settled down. Like last year, uh, when I was still in high desert last year, uh, all the, all last year we had uh, riots on and off all year. 
in this. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. A lot of people are getting stabbed, but it's just like that one. Usually, it just it happens one time. Like it'll be like a big riot, and then it'll like you know the the Mac reps or the leaders, the uh, the the representatives of each race talk to amongst each other and, and they squash the issue, you know. But um, last year we had five back to back. We were on lockdown almost the whole year in High Desert. We were only we only had I believe sixty sixty three days out of the whole year that we weren't on lockdown. It just sucks. It just then you're stuck stuck in your cell all day long. I can imagine it, it's due to the fact that there are so many damn homicides in the California prison system and where they take place at the most is, you just said it, High Desert State Prison. There is something about that prison that, that man, the tension, the violence is at an all-time high. I'm constantly reporting about murders at that prison. Yeah, you know. Yeah, well, that's where I came from. I just did five years there. I was on, on facility D. It, it, it even came to the point. Uh, I've seen a lot of people die there. It, it even came to the point where uh, I think a guard had a, I think a guard killed one inmate or two inmates. Yeah. Yeah. Recently, yeah. yeah. Yep. There was a big thing about that because those, those were a, a big homie for the Northerners. Those were uh, big, the the NS for the, the runners, those, those were the big homies that they killed. Because they were trying to take out another NF member, so right? There was a lot of tension among the Yeah, they did. They killed them. It was three. Three died that day. Yep, the two, two NFs got on the other one. He died, and then the cops shot the other two, and they died. So three of them died that day. Yeah, that's a... Uh... Or not that day, uh, two of them died like the next year, but the other one died. And you said that that actually created a lot of animosity and that created a lot of tension? Well, yeah, that's like the, the representatives of the race, you know? They, in the prison system, they're like uh, the the people that, that make the final decisions, you know? They're the ones that, that have the power and the face over over everything. Like for their race, for their car. You said that you had seen people lose their lives in a vicious manner inside these California prisons. When these incidents take place, how does that affect you immediately after? You go back to your cell. Is this something that's weighing weighing on your head throughout the whole night and it affects you literally for weeks on end? Is this something that perhaps you might pop up in a dream? Are you having flashbacks on this, um, images in your head? Um, how does this affect you mentally? To be honest with you, at first, it used to really bother me. It used to get to me like really bad. Like, like oh, because, yeah. you no, know, like I got used to it. To be honest with you, but like, like lately, like I like I see someone being stabbed, I just look at it and I just shrug my shoulders and I look away, which is I've become immune to this, bullshit, which really sucks and it's uh it's disheartening to say, but it's the truth, you know. Like I see it, and I just be like, damn, at least it wasn't me this time, you know, because I I myself been stabbed in here in riots and by my own people for stupid things, but. Uh, when you see it, like, unless it's, like, really bad, like, uh, there was this one uh, I seen, like, two years ago that was really bad. That one, that one looked like, that one makes you feel, like, f***ed up, like, you want to go help the dude, you know, because I seen one where uh, they came, this guy was playing handball, and they came up behind him, and they picked up a big rock, and they smashed him in the head, so he was tased. The whole handball court got sprayed with it was all smeared against the whole wall. And that, that one that one was pretty vicious. They ended up stabbing that dude like I think hundred twenty two times he got stabbed. And that that just makes you feel like damn, you know, this is this is what this is what this is what it comes down to, I guess, you know, it makes you feel like damn, like I guess this is the world I'm living in. It makes you 
to me at least it makes me doubt all the things I've ever done and, and uh, it makes me wonder why why I've dedicated and uh, committed myself the way I have to to certain things knowing that that's the end result you know I've risked I've risked my life and I've risked my freedom so many times in here just for the benefit of the gang I guess the prison gang you know benefit of my people or the structure whatever the fuck you want to call it just what to, is the whenever structure, man? the thing that's crazy is that that doesn't even what is the movement what, what is the movement no what structure. is the message what is the structure what is the the causa what what is that man in, in your eyes I don't, I, I don't even know no more honestly it, everything's changed so much that it, it's just there, there is no more honestly everything is different now you know there there's a, I don't know if you heard but uh, there's things called peace treaties you know there's there's no more thing. There's no more such thing as gang banging. Like now, if you get caught for shooting somebody out there on the streets, if you didn't have permission to do that, you're gonna get stabbed as soon as you hit the prison, which is crazy. Yeah, it is pretty crazy. If you get caught for a murder or anything out there, you do anything out there for because you're a gang member. You come in here, you get hurt for it, which is retarded. It's the way it is, you know. There is no really cause no more. Things are different. Like, oh, I said things are different. Like right now, like the thing that really disappointed me is high desert. Like uh, that level four has been active forever, and uh, half of GR just got given up to almost. You know what EOP is? Do you know what that is? Yeah, where it's like the um, people with uh, psychotic and mental issues. Yeah. They just gave half a, a D yard, lower D yard, and High Desert is now for the EOPs. More two block is their building, and three block is their whole overflow. So we just lost half the yard right there. That's why I ended up moving because they didn't have, they ran out of room right there in High Desert. So they ended up transferring me to right here back to Calipatria. But it's just like, I don't see the cause no more. Like, uh, we're supposed to be gangsters. We're supposed to be representing something. We're supposed to stand for something. We're supposed to fight for what we came ours, but everything just gets given up nowadays. You know, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, it's all about money. And if, if you could please a certain people, you know, that's, that's all it is about no more. It's not about being a gangster. It's not about being a man about your word or being a, about your business. It's not about none of that no more. It's about money now. And that's just, just sad, you know. The the big homies they treat people that if if you haven't put in work or if they don't know you, you can't talk to them, you can't shake their hands, they don't want you around them, they disrespect people, they be slapping random little homies for no reason. It's, I don't know. I, I think it's just this whole thing is going to shit, you know. You've seen them um would you be able to explain to me what it was like once they re got released from the shoe? And, and did violence increase in yeah. the California prison system once they got released? You think it increased? I, I think the first few years, yeah, it was popping because they, there was a lot of people claiming to work for people that didn't really work for them. I was... As a matter of fact, I was right here uh, in this prison when uh, they started getting released in 2014 and 15, and uh, I was here when uh, they killed the uh, when they started killing their own brothers. You know, like when they killed the uh, Tonito from Wilmas right here on Sea Yard right here in Calipatria. I was here for all that, and it's just crazy, you know. It's just it's different because when they got out, all of us looked up to them like. Like, uh, like there are gods basically, you know, like as far as like for the, the Southern, the Southern structure, it's, uh, they're like our gods, you know, they're like our representatives. Like, uh, they're the people we look up to and, and, and a lot of us inspire to be them or to be like them or whatever the, the case may be, you know, but as time progressed, all they started caring about. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. What benefits them? What can, what can you do for them? If they see something that you have that they like, they're taking it. You, you know, there's a lot of people that are unfortunate that, that make alcohol, that, that burn a pruno to make white lightning, to, to get a little bit of money, to get some canteen or whatever the case may be. They, they go in there, they take it from them, they don't pay them, they just do whatever they want. 
you know, they, they sometimes if you get if you're fortunate enough to get visits and and you're trying to do get your little hustle on, you can't you can't even make money no more. You have to give them almost everything you have and for free. You know, you're basically paying to get them high, and it's just it's just way out, man. Honestly, like it it is what it is. You know, like it's not worth it no more, man. These these dudes, all they care about is themselves. They don't care about us. They, they don't, you know. All, like I said, I, I've, I've stabbed people. I've been in riots. I've hurt people for them. I, I've had positions where I take, uh, I've had to guard. And, you know, I'm, I'm always in a position. I have to build them or whatever the case may be. And, you know, they treat you like whatever for, for no reason, you know. like. And then, we have 60 seconds remaining. The first time I got stabbed in here was over saying no. Just because I said no. That I didn't want to uh, do something because it wasn't for me. it wasn't my choice to make or whatever. I got stabbed over that, and it's just like what the f- no. It doesn't matter what you do, how much work you put in. If you're not them, then it doesn't really matter. You know? Something you you say you've been a riot. So you know you you've picked up cases. You you've had to go on missions. Yeah. However. You cannot decide for yourself as in speak up for yourself as your own man and say, hey, you know what? I don't want to do this one. I'm just trying to chill. Like, uh, that's not possible? Uh, yeah, I mean, as long as you've put in work before, yeah. Like me, I don't I don't have to do anything no more. I've already, like I said, I've stabbed people already. I've been in riots. I've removed people off the yard, you know. Like, like me, it's kind of, how do I explain it? Like, uh, like I'm validated. So like, I know these dudes from the, from the shoe, from being locked up with them, you know? Uh, so wherever I go, even though I'm young, but since I've been in here my whole life, like, I, I guess I have a little bit more influence than like most people, which is why I'm willing to speak out against them. Because I know like at the end of the day, like, even if they say something like I could, I have, enough i don't know i guess pull or whatever to defend what i'm saying because none of the shit i'm saying is wrong or or a lie it's the truth you know so as long as that you you can say it but like say like you're barely coming into the system and they tell you you're doing something you can't say no like you have to do it or if you have tattoos like certain tattoos like if you get the campol tatted and they ask you to do something you can never say no like certain aspect tattoos too if you get those tattoos on you and, and uh, something is to come up and they ask you just because you have those tattoos, you're never allowed to say no. That's what these tattoos represent, that, that you're for the cause and that you're ready and willing. You know, so it stands for uh, a lot of the ASIC tattoos, the, the campo, all that shit stands for uh, for soldier under recognition. You know, like, you can never say no. Like, even if I was to get asked to do something, even to this day, I would probably still say yes because of uh, everything that I have tattooed on me, everything that that I've done, and just because of the person that I am, I would have to do it. But, but yeah, I, I guess you're right. I guess you really can't say no because it's basically like if you're a lifer and you say no, you got something coming too now. So yeah, I guess I guess in essence you can't say no. What is it with the uh, like MLB tattoos? You know the little the little uh, logo on the baseball hats, and the Jordan uh, the Jordan signs. What's up oh. with all these tattoos that are starting to sprout out? I suppose it means you're a hitter, like a heavy hitter, supposedly. But that doesn't really represent nothing in here. That's just more like a street. Shit. That 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 represents like supposedly you're a heavy hitter or or a gunner, you know, like. Supposedly, like, if you get the Jordan one, it just, it means, like, you're a baller or whatever. If you get the uh, the baseball guy swinging the bat or the MLB tattoo, it, it means uh, that you're a heavy hitter, you know, like, uh, you're you're with the business and you're out there doing stuff. So, that's more of a street tattoo than it is a prison tattoo. You know, um, you know, doing this little thing, man, I've met a lot of people who are very savvy, who are very crafty. And perhaps even manipulative, man. Oh, I'm really crafty. And, per- and perhaps even manipulative, <laughs> man. Manipulative. Uh, yeah, have you, you know seen what? some manipulation, some horrible manipulation with some horrible outcomes? There he is. 
everything's a manipulation in here, man. Like, there is not nothing that's not manipulated, you know? Like, when they ask you to put in work, like, the first time I got asked to do something, the way that it was explained to me, the way that, that you know, it was expressed, it, they made it seem like you're doing this, you know, you're, 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 you're doing it for the greater good of, you know, the, the, the homie or whatever, that, you know, that that it makes you something, that you're contributing your part. That's manipulative like a mother because all you're really doing is hurting somebody else because somebody else doesn't want to do it themselves. All you're doing is catching more time. You're not, nothing is gained, you know? Like, what the fuck is gained? Nothing. Because like I said, like, I've done a lot of shit. I've been here forever. I, I, I've been around, I've been on the level fours, I've been to the shoe, I'm validated. Man, like that, just the, the littlest things get you in the bad graces so fast. Like, it's like crazy, man. Like, Everything in here is a manipulation, like, like I've seen this one dude that, uh, that, uh, what's it called, uh, he's in high desert still, so I won't say his name, but, um, he had three years to go to the house, and one of his homies was going on a, on a, on a mission, right, and he, he talked to his, uh, to the other homie that was three years to the house, and he told him, like, what's up, man, you know, this is the homie here from the hood, he's him up, you know, the, the OG's asking us to get him, like, like, what's up, boy, I need you to come with me, you know, that's our homie, because he's from the hood, we gotta get him, you know, uh, and this dude went, the dude ended up dying, now this dude got life, you know, like, if that's not- This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. So now, now, now this guy got life, the other dude died, you know, that's like, two more lives gone away for nothing. Uh, there's nothing that I could say in this, that's in the prison system that's not manipulated because they, they'll sell you a story or they'll sell you a dream or or they'll sell you or they'll tell you whatever you want to hear or they'll you know it is the way it is where the, it is by giving you drugs or trying to give you like a little bit of influence in here or whatever it is everybody has their their uh, something they're seeking in here you know for me it wasn't drugs it was an influence mine was power mine was respect. So every little chance I got to do something, I would do it because I thought I was moving up the ranks, you know? And none of that shit matters, you know? That shit's all manipulation, man. All that shit, if I could go back in time, I would I would not do none of the shit I would do, I've done. Because, you know, all it's, all it's done is cause me to lose more family, cause me to stay in here longer, cause me to suffer. It's, it's not worth it, honestly. If you had the chance to do it all over again, if you can hit reset, if you can go back and, uh, you know, do things differently, would you? Uh, honestly, I would say yes and no, because if I would go back, I wouldn't have my daughter. And that's like the love of my life. And if I did everything differently, she wouldn't be here. But if I could still have her and my son and uh, and do everything differently, I would do it in a heartbeat. I, I would change the way I was. I would have, you know, I would have stuck to being in school. Like in here, I got my education. I have an AA with a major in business. I'm working on my bachelor's right now. I have a bunch of certificates, but it's not the same, you know. I would I would have loved to go to school, go to high school, go to out there experience stuff, you know. I would have loved to be a regular person, you know. I see people out there, I see TV, I see how people live, like I see when they just get to eat whatever they want, you know, I would I would love to do that man. So honestly if I could I think I would go back and change everything. It's just not worth it. Do you have any last message, any last advice? You know, for those that are still striving, for those that are still doing their thing, or for those that are perhaps contemplating on, uh, you know, joining the lifestyle. Man, honestly, to anybody that, that honestly is thinking about it, I would tell them just stick to school, you know, get your education, get a job, get you a girl that's down for you, you know. Because in here, man... It,
being worth it no more. Everything's going to shit, you know? There's more S and Ys than there is sheep now. There's nothing that you could do out there. If you know you're you're out there, you think you're game banging, man. You're coming in here game banging, you're gonna get hurt. You know, you're you're out there trying to do your thing, you're out there trying to shoot people, you're trying to earn your name for yourself. You come in here, all you did out there is gonna backfire on you because what ever since all those peace treaties, man, there's no more such thing as game banging. There's an end of hostilities agreement. If you get caught shooting somebody out there, as soon as you hit a mainland, you're getting stabbed, man. Like Honestly, the best thing I could recommend for somebody is stay in school, get you a girl that's down for you, you know, uh, find somebody that you care about and just stick to that. Find something you like and, and work on that. Gang thing is not the road, man. Why do you want to be stuck inside a cell where you have to wait for someone to let you out, to, to tell you when to eat, tell you when to go to the store, tell you when to go to the yard, tell you when you can shower. You're stuck in here. You got to live with someone you don't know. You're away from everything you love. You think all that is worth it? I know I did. I know when I was growing up, you know, I thought I was a shit, honestly. You know, I, like I said, like before I shot that cop, I had already been shooting people. So I thought I thought I was something, you know, I thought I was. Well, what is, what do I have to show for all that, man? I've lost my family. I've lost my loved ones. I'm stuck in a fucking box, you know. I'm stuck where some, I have to listen to these fucking cops tell me what to do. Yeah, it's all for what you know. You have to, you have to fight to get to store. Like, it's not worth it, man. I would honestly, I don't recommend this lifestyle. Even though I'm a part of this lifestyle and I'm still here and I still, you know, I'm still on this side and I'm still representing. I could honestly say, being having 19 years in the system, I could say this is shit is not worth it, man. It's not what it used to be either. It's everything's changed. Everything's kind of. Everything now is about either making money. So you're gonna come in here. You think you're gonna you're gonna be cool with the homies? They they won't even acknowledge you. You know, if you don't know, already have an in with people. You're just gonna be in here. You're gonna be a loner. You're gonna be left aside. It's just it's not worth it, honestly. And you no, know, I would just say for people that are considering this lifestyle, there is better alternatives, man. Join the sport if you if you're seeking friendship, companionship. You know, get you a girlfriend, you know, stay in school is the best thing I could say, you know. I know that, that our parents grow up telling us to stay in school, try hard, and we we laugh it off like, ah, oh, you know, they don't know nothing. But honestly, man, if you got somebody in your life that, that's there for you, you should cherish that because if you ever, if somebody's ever unfortunate enough to actually end up in this predicament and being here, you're not going to have nothing. You're not going to be with nobody. It's just gonna be you. So I would cherish what I have and focus on something better that isn't game banging because honestly, game banging is dead, you know? There's, you're not even allowed game banging out there no more. So why people still do it, I don't know. But my, my best advice and, and my encouragement for people out there is just that. Just stick to school, find you somebody you like. If it's a guy or it's a girl, you know, to each his own, just. Find someone that you could care for and that will care for you and stick to school, get you a job, and start trying to make a family, you know, instead of trying to join this family, which is going to hurt you, let you down, and waste your life, you know. I honestly hope uh, people will, like, if, if, you know, you look at me, I have all the tattoos, I have all the work behind me, I have the name, the recognition, the status, all that bullshit, but it doesn't mean. What does that get me, you know? I don't have I don't have nobody that I can rely on no more because I chose this lifestyle over that. And it's something that took me a long time to learn that it's not worth it. So so anybody out there that's listening, anybody that that, you know, is considering joining a gang, I would say don't. I would say like I said, just stick to education, stick to work, stick to, to uh, relationships, anything but this man, honestly. It's just I want to go ahead and say thank you Thank you for your kind words And your words of wisdom And I hope somebody out there listening Will sincerely take this to the heart man. Take Keith ladies and gentlemen Check yourself before you wreck yourself This is only one life Live it to the fullest And do not ruin your chance at life With that being said Jose thank you sir Thank you for sharing your story 